Greg, the global beauty industry is valued upwards of $250 billion. My next guest turned a beauty blog into a global brand. Glossier has raised more than $10.4 million in venture capital funding since its launch in 2014, selling a year's worth of inventory in the first quarter of this year and more than doubling active customer count year to date. Glossier founder and CEO Emily Weiss is with us right now to tell us all about it. Emily, congratulations to you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. So what do you think is behind the success of Glossier? Tell us about the company. Sure. Uh, I, I think what's really remarkable about Glossier is that it's, it's really community driven. Um, we, we have, you know, as a very young company, only 18 months old and sold exclusively through our own channels on Glossier.com, uh, we've really relied on our customer to spread the word, you know, spread the word, and, and she has. I think, uh, you know, the power of authorship today because of social media and everyone being able to be their own authors has enabled uh, everyone to sort of be their own influencer, and, you know, the, these influencers have, have all, you know, really led to Glossier, you know, becoming, uh, becoming pretty um, everywhere. I, I was reading yeah. earlier that, that there's demand is so high that there's a 10,000 person waiting list for one of your brow products, yes. for, for the for the uh, brow, Boy brow brow, exactly. Yeah. So well, why? I mean, there's well, so much competition in the market. Sure. So that actually has to do with um, something you mentioned earlier. I mean, you know, as a startup uh, and a venture-backed business um, that's fairly new, we don't have a lot of data to, to support our, our, you know, sales, our, our sort of uh, sales projections. And so we ended up um, anticipating a, a certain amount of revenue this year and ended up, uh, you know, we're hopefully going to grow about 600% by December. So that led nice. to us selling through, um, you know, basically a year's worth of inventory uh, in March, by March. So so, um, you know, that led to us stocking out for, for quite a period of time and, um, and people uh, join our wait list and we converted about 40% on our wait list. So, so it's, it's what, are, what are the demographics yeah. of your core customer? Because it, it definitely seems like based on the, your just exclusive online distribution mm -hmm. that she's young. Um, yeah, the majority of our customers are between, I would say, 18 and 34. So it's a largely millennial demographic. I mean, she's definitely spending a lot of time on her um, mobile devices. Um, and she's definitely looking for looking to social media, looking to her friends, looking to influencers to inform her purchasing decisions. But I would say that Glossier is really more of a psychographic than a demographic. Um, you know, traditional beauty companies are largely unchanged I think since the 60s in terms of uh, product development and marketing style um, uh, which is really all about kind of aspiring to be someone else a lot of beauty is based on fantasy and I think what's interesting oh you think and <laughs> even, yeah. even on social media even in this day and age it is pure fantasy with airbrushing sure but I think what we've seen which is really interesting is that there's a large number of women who uh, really are looking to be sort of the best version of themselves they're not really looking to transform into someone else. Um, we're in an age of, you know, like, you know, self-care and, and uh, taking a lot of, you know, classes and really working on your own version of how to be kind of the best version of yourself. And I think Glossy is focused on real life and products for real life really, um, you know, relates to her. So, Emily, here's the question. So, obviously, you said millennials are majority of your market base. How do you think millennials will change the beauty market and then the fashion market after that, just based on our spending patterns and how we shop? Sure. So, I think what's, um, you know, interesting about beauty is that it often, I think, follows a lot of the the consumption um, patterns of fashion. I think fashion moves a touch faster, and so I think fashion, about 60% of apparel is, is online now in terms of purchasing, and beauty is about 20 points behind that. So I think, um, you know, this, this means that there's definitely going to be a shift, I think, over the coming years. I think, uh, you know, women are going to be shopping much more for beauty online, and I think um, what's going to help her do that are brands like Glossier that provide a lot of context in a very crowded market. Before you go, what's the one piece of advice you want to give emerging entrepreneurs who are trying to do what you've been so successful at? I mean, how tough was it starting a business? What can you tell them about doing you, that? You know, what I would say is authenticity is so important today um, for brands. Uh, I think especially, you know, younger consumers are looking um, at brands that they really uh, feel listen to them and pay attention. And I think really that's led to to all of our success is that we, we, we are very honest. We're very transparent with our customer. Um, we actually posted on our blog a whole essay about why we're sold out, our supply chain issue, the why we sold so fast, and you know how they can sign up to wait for it. And I think just the transparency really helps shape um, brands today. Yeah, I think that's great advice. Emily, good to see you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much for joining us. Emily Weiss there at Glossier.